This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the white PSP. The story ends here. You wake up in bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the black PSP. You stay in Wonderland. And I'll show you just how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering you is a path to the dark side. Nothing more. DSD Hacking 101. Hi, welcome to PSP Hacking 101, episode 7. The PXP tricks. It's his name so he can say it. I feel <laughs> dumb when I say it. Anyways, <laughs> in today's episode, we're going to be covering PSP radio. Uh, tuning into shoutcast streams from your PSP uh, so you can annoy everybody at Starbucks with your crappy taste in music. And we're also going to show you how to make your own homemade memory stick converter. Adapter. Adapter. Converter. Whatever. Yeah, so you can use those um, cheap, little, uh, bigger memory sticks on your PSP. Just for fun? what we thought. Well, hey, you know, why not? And besides, you can get a memory stick that holds four gigabytes. That's true. So. All right, so this next segment, we're going to show you how to make your own memory stick to memory stick duo adapter. Or at least show you how we did it. Yeah, using <laughs> common household computer appliance extras. Items, things. Yeah. So the cost of this should be virtually nothing if you have a bunch of junk laying around. Like Box does. Yeah. He's got a lot of junk. In the trunk. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I had to say it. <laughs> I had to. Hawks here. One of our first uh, on screen ha camera hacks. Or hacks on camera. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be modifying the 32 meg card that came with your PSP, making a ribbon cable to connect it to a standard memory card reader. So you can use the 4 gig, or the Sony memory stick with your PSP. Or if you just don't have a lot of money, then you can just use whatever memory sticks you have laying around if you have any from some old digital cameras or whatnot. So take your 32 meg card and open it up. Be very careful, it's very hard to do. Should end up with something along the lines of this. The other thing we're going to be using is just a standard memory card reader. Uh, this is an, like an 8-in-1, and we're going to be taking off the regular memory stick adapter. And we're basically just going to be tracing the leads from this over to this. And be very careful when taking off the case. It's very difficult. Uh, the thing's pretty much glued together because we need this front half right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to saw off this. Using a regular ID cable, we're using the 60 or the, the 80 pin cable because the wire is quite a bit thinner than the regular 40s. So you want to count out 10 on there. And then it just peels just like that. It's pretty simple. Super thin, man. Super thin. So this is what holds the 32 megs. And this is how small the little 2 gigger is. So now we've got the section that we're going to be using to make this with. Snap right in there. Okay, so we've taken our 80 pin IDE cable and we've stripped off 10 wires. We left the wire with the red on it in the corner and we're going to match that up with the notch on our uh, 32 meg and on the other side it's going to, we're going to solder it on to the, the little latch that it latches onto here. And I guess Fraggable's documenting this because he likes to see how I burn myself. It's Every fun. Time. He does it all the time. I'm pinning the wires right now. That's where you put a little bit of solder on the tip of all the wires. 
Hey, that was a good bit of info. I didn't know that. We didn't Wait. do that last time on the Xbox. I didn't? No. Yeah, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. That's the only way I got those stupid little things to work. I can feel a burning coming up. So that sound right there means we have a circuit on the multimeter. And what Ragville is doing is he's testing these fine connections to see if, uh, you know, on a short, one of the leads on the memory stick duo is going to more than one wire. Because we don't want that, because that's how we're going to end up destroying this PSP. Or at least the memory stick reader which would make it still pretty doggone useless. Okay, so we determined that the red is going to go to the far end here. So that'll be red. A little bit flex on the table. Probably shouldn't be doing this right off the table, but this is a really bad table. Bad table. So it's main purpose in life is for this sort of thing. Now I suggest you lay off the caffeine before doing this. So far it's a fairly steady hand. Yeah, no way I'd be doing this. <laughs> yeah. You have to limit the amount of talking in your system to this. <laughs> It. Right now we're just testing. This is the test right here with a 32 meg memory stick. Recognizes it. All right. So now that we have the adapter set, I'm gonna go ahead and take a regular memory stick and insert it here. <laughs> the weak point. Uh, you gotta be careful. These things are extremely sensitive. Um, the pins on this side of it were giving me a hard time and it wasn't recognizing the memory stick. Now here it is. A regular Sony memory stick. We just did the ribbon cable, did the pin straight through to an old chopped up 32 meg memory stick duo. Fox, lead us into how we use PSP Radio 9. All right, PSP Radio 9. And you're gonna need to download the latest build. These guys are really on top of things. They're adding new features all the time. We'll post the link in the show notes to the forum, the, to the topic thread in a forum for the program. Yeah, a place where you can get the latest version. Now, after you download the latest build, throw it on over to your games directory on your memory stick like you do with any other homebrew application. Uh, this is for the 1.5 folks. Sorry for anybody who's upgraded past 2.0. You're out of luck for now. <laughs> uh, you're going to need to go to shoutcast.com, uh, grab some of the playlists, and these are the, the, the servers that you're going to be listening to the music to. So I'm going to grab this alternative station here, maybe a top 40 station. It saves them as just uh, a, a standard playlist, and just rename those to something that you'll, you'll know that they are when they show up on your PSP, throw them into the playlist directory on your memory stick, then you can go ahead and uh, launch the application. But first, you've got to make sure you have an internet connection going to your PSP. And for that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here... It, this is... Uh, <laughs> all right, due to some of the emails Pox got after that WinVNC, or that PSP VNC, he, 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 we've set up this little segment for people out there that are a little... Uh, unknowledgeable about basic networking info. Yes. Uh, for anybody that actually knows about networking, or if you happen to work in networking or computers, don't watch. You Fast will. Forward. Yeah, you will be bored to tears. Anyways. Unless you want to know how to get porn. Here's here's <laughs> Professor Ragable with mm, networking the PSP. One on one. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, this is Networking 101, all about IP addresses. Okay, first off, everything on the internet has an IP address. For instance, the Shoutcast server right here and your DSL cable modem. IP addresses are used so computers and devices can talk to each other. It's like the public mail system. You need to know the address so you know so you can know where to send something. So this Shoutcast server can know where to send its good old music and how you get porn to your PC. It's true. However, there is a difference in IP addresses. Public versus private. Everything on the internet is a public address, such as this Shoutcast server, 216, 66, 69, 140. Your, the IP address for your DSL cable modem, also public. However, anything behind an access point or a router serving out NAT is going to be a private address. For instance, your PSP gets a private IP address from the access point, which is acting as a DHCP server, or you can statically assign it. These, these addresses are not accessible from the internet or the public domain, hence they are private. The only way that the PSP gets any kind of information from the Shoutcast server is from the access point forwarding the information to the PSP. Does that make sense to you, ignorant user pox? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want to listen to music on my PSP. What do I have to do? And what, what, how do I set up the connection to do it? The connection to do it? Yes. All right. First off, you just need to set up the Wi-Fi connection between your PSP and your Wi-Fi access point. You can set it up to be DHCP, and you'll get this address automatically from the access point. The latest version of PSP Radio is DHC. DHCP so it can get that address from the access point. From there, you simply just get a Shoutcast server IP address that you'll want to use and... Those are just rarely available on, on sh the Shoutcast website, right? Yes! Yes, good student of mine, they are. Oh, I don't know, you want to have any words of wisdom or something? Yeah, I do actually. Okay, first off, IP addresses, they have to be unique, otherwise when if a device is trying to send something to dot 40 and there's two devices with the same IP address that information doesn't know where to go It'd be like having the same mailing address as your neighbor you're gonna get his mail and he's gonna get your mail and it's gonna get all mixed up and you're gonna get his bills and it's not a good scenario so that's why they have to be unique thank you professor Ragable for that uh, interesting bit of information now where's my damn 401k <laughs> yeah Anyways, <clears throat> I want it seriously. Where's my 401k? 401k. Yeah. I can't think of anything to say to that. Donate. Yeah. Click Google Ads. <laughs> <laughs> Donate right. to our 401k. Yeah, get get Ragable a 401k. <laughs> All right. So now that you've got your PSP set up for networking, you can finally launch the application on your PSP. First thing that's going to pop up is a standard text interface. So we're gonna go press start, get to the options screen, select the network connection that you made, then press X, then go turn on that network, the network interface so we can actually get to our Shoutcast servers. And I recommend the 3D interface because it looks way cooler. So we'll go ahead and turn that on. Then press start, get out of the, the options menu. Now, these are all the playlists that we've thrown into that directory there. So we can just use the up and down arrow keys to select one of those, hit X, and then there's different channels on those servers. So you can select one of those, hit X, bam! You've got uh, streaming radio on your PSP. So anywhere you've got a nice uh, internet connection, you'll be able to stream your own favorite type of music. So load up the most vulgar rap you can find and play it at a Christian academy serving up free Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, that's it for episode seven. Uh, we're out of here. Yeah, don't brick your PSP. Please. Please. And if you do, don't come. <laughs> don't, don't blame us. Yeah, don't blame us. <laughs> we warned you. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, one last thing. Uh, people have been asking us, oh, why don't you put out your shows more frequently? Or it takes you too long to get uh, a new segment out. Uh, for that, go to gamersdaily.tv. They have a really great podcast.
covers a lot of the latest news and for all the consoles, but they also do a lot with the PSP. Real cool place. Okay, we gotta go. We got poodles after us. Yeah, the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> They're vicious. Oh, uh, one last thing. Um, one more episode after this, we're gonna be releasing volume two of our DVD. This time with audio commentaries. And we're gonna cut you guys a sweet deal if you want to donate. Fifteen bucks will give you a volume one and volume two. Or if you just want volume two, ten bucks, donate it. Give us your address. We'll send it out to you. And it'll will we help have more us. extras this time. Oh yeah, we'll have more extras. This has been a Two Smart Guys production. Oh yeah, audio commentary. Oh, audio commentary. Did you already say that? Yeah, I said audio commentary. I'm not all here, okay? Raggable's been sick. That's why he hasn't been on the forums. Uh, yeah. Or he's lazy. One or the other. Both.